جان کا کیا پروگرام ہے اللہ اکبر اللہ اکبر سبحان اللہ At a government-run orphanage north of the Pakistani capital Islamabad, children orphaned by the earthquake gather for morning class. Separated from his parents by the quake, 13-year-old Aurangzeb thinks they're dead. But just as class is settling down for the first lesson of the day, a delegation from the Red Cross arrives carrying exciting news. Against the odds, and six months after the event, Aurangzeb's mother has been found alive and well. क्या सोचा था मिलेंगे कि नहीं मिलेंगे के बारे में सोचा था नहीं मिलेंगे फिर भी चलो अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह अल्लाह ने करम किया है आप क्या सोच रहे थे आपके दिमाग में क्या मतलब आप क्या सोच रहे थे मैंने सोचा था कि अम्मी फोन हो चुकी है बात तो सही है आंग साहब आप काफी उदास थे हां बहुत चीज ये बच्चे अल्लाह का शुक्र अदा करो सब सलामत हैं the Red Cross delegates have also brought a letter from Aurangzeb's mother. But instead of calling him home, she tells him to stay just where he is. She knows the facilities and education available to him at the orphanage are much better than he'd get at home. And as a mother, she wants what's best for her son. For his part, Aurangzeb's just happy to know that she's still alive. And it's the closure of stories like this that mark the end of the emergency phase of the relief effort. A relief effort which so far has won almost universal praise. All independent observers will tell you that uh, we handled it very well and it was a collective effort to evacuate people, to provide medical aid, to provide food and shelter. And this process is now gradually coming to an end. We want people to gradually move out of the tents and the refugee camps into permanent homes. We have impressed upon people that living in a tent with your family forever is not the best thing for them or their children. Pakistani-administered Kashmir was the area worst hit by the earthquake, with basic infrastructure all but destroyed. Across much of the territory, reconstruction is already underway as people try to piece together the remnants of their shattered lives. But for those people who've spent the last six months in tents, the task of reconstruction looks set to be a long and painful process. Throughout the long winter months, the basic needs of the displaced have all been met. And the prospect of return to villages utterly destroyed is a daunting one, especially now that they've grown accustomed to the free social services, to which they'll have little access once back in their villages. Muhammad Iftikhar is preparing to return home with his mother and siblings. <laughs>
No choice, because the government's made it clear that the $3,000 compensation package that they're offering the displaced is only available to those who return to their villages. But for Mohammed's younger sister Binesh, the prospect of going home brings special fears. Today, on the morning of their proposed return, she wakes and tells her mother that she's lost her sight. So her worried family calls a doctor. Binesh was in school when the earthquake struck and saw many of her friends killed by the collapsing rubble. Does the doctor think it's appropriate for her to return when the trauma of the disaster is still so fresh in her mind? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have such facilities and such human resource here to look after such patients. So this is better to go home and uh, with your friends, with your families, with your natural environments, she's going to be all right. Binesh has not really lost her sight, says the doctor. She's just scared of going home. So her brother continues loading their possessions and food rations onto the truck that'll carry them back to their village. But Mohammed's reluctance to once again face life without the safety net of the relief effort is a typical sentiment of many of the victims. Mir Anjum Altaf is a development analyst who spent the last two months touring displacement camps and villages throughout the affected areas. While praising the level of assistance given to the displaced, some aspects of the relief effort have left him worried. There is a certain amount of unhappiness with the modality of that assistance. Uh, people have, uh, have felt that there is, uh, it has created a lot of, of, of dependency and a lot of uncertainty. We were in, in, in Buttergram yesterday and uh, uh, this, this old man was, was very clear about uh, his feelings. He said, look, we are Pathans, we are very fierce, uh, fiercely independent, we have a pride. And this whole process has turned us and our children into beggars. That's why I said we would like people to get back onto their feet. And that is why we are moving away from free food to such livelihood programs like food for work, cash for work, we will provide you the seeds and fertilizers and agricultural implements so that you start generating activity. You get back to the feet. Don't look for free food. So we're looking for a behavioral shift here. So I think it is in fitness of things that the people move back and get back on their feet, start working. That's the only way. You can't do it any other way. You have to go back and get going. Binesh and her family are lucky that their village is reasonably close and serviced by a motorable road. Kashmir's roads are still scarred by landslides and many remain impassable. But if these people don't get home soon, there'll be little chance of rebuilding their homes before the next winter sets in. And now that the rainy season is around the corner, the threat of fresh landslides grows by the day, making the return process even more difficult. After a long climb up the steep and narrow mountain road, the family has finally reached home. Binesh and her mother leave the men to unpack as they make the short climb up to their village. Not much remains, and the few buildings left standing are largely uninhabitable. But as Binesh and her mother make a sorry tour of the ruins of their village, at last there's a welcome sight. Seeing her aunt again brings the first smile in many months to Binesh's face. But the trauma of that day is never far from their minds. <laughs> Binesh 
They never came, leaving these two girls without a mother. Meeting up with her aunt again has given Binesh the courage to confront some of her demons, and she resolves to take her mother to the site of her former school to show her what happened that day. अंधेरा पड़ गया था कमरे में सारे कमरे में लड़के नजर नहीं आ रही थी चीखों पकार रही थी बस Close to the school lies one of the victims, Binesh's favourite teacher, who refused to be carried from the rubble until the last child had been rescued. But by the time the rescuers got to her, it was too late. So Binesh has made a silent promise to her dead teacher to do just that. But the physical and psychological devastation of the earthquake will make a difficult promise even harder to keep. <laughs>